Hey there, welcome to video 15. Today we're going to discuss DC load lines and work a few practice problems related to the previous video where we did the Q point derivations. Uh, before we move on, uh, the picture you're looking at on the screen is a 2N277 germanium power transistor with the top cut off. I bought a bunch of these back when I was in ninth grade in uh, 1972 and I still have them. So I figured I would throw a picture of this one up here so that you could see an old school germanium power transistor. All right, on to the topic at hand. Let's do a real quick review of the three regions of operation that we're interested in. The active region uh, for this particular circuit that we uh, derived equations for in the last video, we require VCE to be between zero and VCC volts, and the collector current must be between zero and IC sat. Uh, IC sat is the maximum possible collector current that can flow in the circuit. Um, if we are in the active region, then these equations tell us the uh, Q point values for IC and VCE. All right, uh, in saturation, the transistor is turned fully on and the collector current will be its maximum value IC sat. Uh, VCE will be at its minimum value VCE sat. And typically that's about 0.2 volts. All right, uh, because it's so small, what I'm usually going to do is assume that VCE sat is approximately zero volts. That'll result in very little error, and it simplifies this equation a little bit so that we get IC in saturation is approximately VCC over RC plus RE. All right, then cut off, the transistor is turned off and ideally we get zero current flow through the device, IC and cut off is zero. And because these two emitter and collector resistors carry no current, they have no voltage drop, the entire, entire power supply must be dropped across the transistor and VCE and cut off equals VCC. All right, let's apply this information and do a couple of uh, examples. All right, what we have on the left here is the circuit we used in the last video to derive Q point equations. And I've just uh, put in some typical resistor and power supply values. All right, over here are the uh, collector curves for this hypothetical transistor. And if we examine them, we find that beta equals 100 for this transistor, right? Six milliamps collector current divided by 60 microamps base current or four mils, 40 micro, whichever curve we use, we get a beta of 100. All right, now technically I don't need these curves for what I'm doing. All I need to know is the beta, but since they're here, it's not a problem. All right, let's come back to our circuit and let's do the easiest thing first. And that is let's find VCE cutoff. VCE cutoff is simply the power supply voltage, VCC, which is 15 volts. All right, uh, IC in saturation, we know is VCC divided by RC plus RE, and that is 15 volts divided by 1.5 K ohms plus one K ohm. So that's 15 volts divided by 2.5 K ohms and that works out to be six milliamps. All right, so here are our limits of operation for the transistor, 15 volts, six milliamps. The DC load line is a straight line that connects these two points. All right, and here it is. All right, now the DC load line represents all possible locations for the operating point of this transistor. Wherever the Q point is, it's got to lie somewhere on this line. Let's figure out exactly where that is in this case. All right, so ICQ 
is equal to VBB minus VBE divided by RB over beta plus RE. And plugging our numbers in, we get uh, 10 volts minus 0.7 is 9.3 volts. Okay, 100K divided by 100 is 1K for this term. And the emitter resistor is also 1K ohm. So our ICQ for this circuit works out to be eh, about 4.7 milliamps. All right, VCEQ is VCC minus ICQ times RC plus RE. So we've got 15 volts minus 4.7 milliamps times uh, 1.5 K plus 1 K ohm, that is RC plus RE, and that works out to be approximately 3.3 volts. All right, so here are our Q point coordinates 6 milliamp, or I'm sorry, not 6 milliamps, 4.7 milliamps, and 3.3 volts. All right. Uh, 4.7 milliamps, if I mark that one first, that looks like maybe right about here. And if I drop down from there, that would be 3.3 volts. This point is our Q point. So we're 4.7 milliamps and 3.3 volts. There's our Q point. It's a little bit close to saturation, but uh, perfectly acceptable. All right, let's uh, do another example. All right, a similar circuit, except that now I don't have an emitter resistor. Not a problem. We just uh, set RE equal to zero in all of our equations and calculate uh, as normal. Let's start by assuming again that beta equals 100. I don't have the collector curves, but let's say we know the beta anyway. All right, and first things first, let's find VCE cutoff, which is simply VCC of 10 volts. IC sat is uh, VCC divided by RC plus RE. So in this case, it's VCC over RC plus zero. So it's 10 volts divided by 1K ohm, which equals 10 milliamps. All right, so our DC load line ranges from VCE cutoff of 10 volts to IC sat of 10 milliamps. And if I sketch that line in here, there we go. That's our DC load line. Let's find the Q points. All right, ICQ equals VBB minus VBE divided by RB over beta plus RE. Well, RE is zero, so we're just going to eliminate that term, and we get 5 volts minus 0.7 is 4.3 volts, divided by 100K divided by 100 is 1K. So we get an ICQ of 4.3 milliamps. All right, VCEQ is equal to VCC minus IC times RC plus RE, but there is no RE, so it's just ICQ times RC. That gives us 10 volts minus 4.3 milliamps times 1K ohm. 
10 volts minus 4.3 volts is 5.7 volts. So our Q point is located at 5.7 volts by 4.3 milliamps. And let me mark this one first. Come across 4.3 milliamps. There is our Q point. It's almost in the middle of the load line. Okay, that's not a bad place to be typically. All right, next example. Hmm, well, we've got another case with no emitter resistor, but this time the base is connected up to the 10 volt power supply rail. All right, so what we've got in this case is VBB is the same as VCC, which is 10 volts. Not a problem. All right, let's assume again that our beta equals 100. And let's start with the easiest thing to find, and that is VCE cutoff. VCE cutoff equals VCC, which is 10 volts. So I'll mark that right now. 10 volts. Okay. Collector saturation current IC sat equals VCC. That's 10 volts divided by RC plus RE. There is no RE, so it's simply 10 volts divided by 5k ohms. And that gives us 2 milliamps. So the collector saturation current for this circuit is 2 milliamps. Our maximum VCE is 10 volts. So here is our DC load line. Let's find the Q point. ICQ equals VBB minus VBE divided by RB over beta. I better write that down. Okay, VBB, which is same as VCC, divided by RB over beta plus RE, which is zero. So here's what we've got. So that's going to be, and don't forget to subtract dot VBE. All right, so we've got uh, 10 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by 930K divided by 100 is 9.3k ohms. So we've got 9.3 volts divided by 9.3k ohms, and that equals one milliamp. So there is our ICQ. VCEQ equals VCC minus ICQ times RC. There is no emitter resistor, so we've got 10 volts minus 1 milliamp times 5k is 5 volts. So our VCEQ is 5 volts. So we're exactly in the middle of the load line. 5 volts by 1 milliamp right here. Our Q point is exactly centered on the load line. Again, that's probably a pretty good place to be for many applications. All right, uh, another problem, uh, very similar to the very first problem, except the uh, base resistor is going up to the power supply. Let's assume beta is 100 again. All right, finding the easiest thing first, VCE cut off simply 15 volts the power supply uh, IC saturation is uh, VCC divided by RC plus RE and that gives us uh, da, 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 let's see uh, about four milliamps roughly okay so our coordinates are 15 volts over here uh, four milliamps here all right let's go ahead and find our icq 
and that's going to be VBB minus VBE. So VBB and VCE or, or VCC are the same again. So we've got uh, 15 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by RB over beta. 150K divided by 100 is 1.5K plus 3.3K ohms. And if we crunch through these numbers, 14.3 divided by 1,500 with that, that's uh, about 3 milliamps. So we're sitting at 3 milliamps for ICQ. VCEQ is VCC 15 volts minus 3 milliamps times 470 plus 3,300. And that works out to be about 3.7 volts. So our Q point coordinates are 3.7 volts and 3 milliamps. All right, let's draw the DC load line. Put our Q point in there. Uh, 3 milliamps is, say, right about here. And this is about 3.7 volts. There's our Q point. Again, we're a little bit close to saturation, but we're still okay. All right, one last problem. All right, now in this one, we have no base resistor and no collector resistor. Uh, but again, it's not a problem. Uh, let's start by uh, assuming betas 100 and let's do the easy one VCE cutoff equals VCC which is 15 volts the collector saturation current is VCC divided by RC plus RE well there is no RC so it's simply VCC over RE, 15 volts divided by 1 K ohm equals 15 milliamps. Okay, uh, let's mark these 15 volts, 15 milliamps, and I'll draw the DC load line. And now we'll figure out the Q point. ICQ equals VBB minus VBE divided by RB over beta. Well, zero divided by beta is zero. So it's simply RE all by itself down here. So we've got 5.7 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by 1K is 5 volts divided by 1K is 5 milliamps all right vce q is vcc minus icq times rc plus re there is no rc so it's re all by itself so we've got 15 volts minus um what was our icq 5 milliamps times 1k ohm so we got 15 volts minus 5 volts equals 10 volts. So our Q point coordinates are 5 milliamps, 10 volts. All right, and here is 10 volts projecting up and across 5 milliamps. There we go. There's our Q point. This one's a little closer to cutoff, but again, it's a perfectly acceptable Q point. Okay, so there were a bunch of sample problems using the information we've covered up to this point. Uh, we'll continue with transistor analysis in the next few videos. And uh, again, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them and uh, tell your friends and uh, family to subscribe to the videos and I will see you next time.